I guess we'll call ourselves to order at 436, so our official start here of the policy subcommittee meeting of the Hadley School Committee. And we have, tonight is first reading of policies ICICA through JRD. And uh, for the public who may be watching, um, I already shared with Tara, I'll say this here, uh, John just said that school committee meetings are have the second highest rate of views after Hopkins basketball. Um, I said, wow, wish I'd known that before I uh, had this hairdo, but okay, news again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I am doing this in case now that people may, may actually be watching these. Um, so it, we attempt to go through the entire policy book every year in chunks. And in some cases, we are simply reviewing policy. And in other places, there's recommended language changes. The school committee has final authority over policy. The process that we use to determine what should change is we first look at the Mass Association of School Committee recommendations, which in your recommended changes, if you have a color version, were in red. Um, and then we send them to school council, to the school committee, attorney Dupre's office, and his changes are in blue. And then the school committee reviews those and uh, makes a determination about what they think makes sense or doesn't make sense. So that's where we're at for the public. Um, and we do a first reading, and then we do a second reading before they're voted on with the school committee. So the first one we have is IC and ICA, the school year and the school calendar. I do want to say that um, I have to believe that this is a typo on number one, but even if there was a recommendation to have um, the school year, to have the number of days be taken from the teacher's contract, I still think number one should read 180 school days because the teachers could say, you know, we want to negotiate something different around the professional days. Finances could require us to have that discussion with the union in, in, at some point or not. But so the 180 is the legal requirement for students. And uh, I would recommend that at least 180 school days rather than having number one now says the school committee shall include a school year, which includes at least 185 school days. Um, I would say that should read 180, just like it does in number two and number three. That makes, makes sense. sense. I mean, we're, we're um, legally required to have 180 school days. Right. So it should, right. it should be reflected in the policy, of course. Right, yeah. And right now it is five professional development days for teachers, but the policy doesn't have to because that they can, they can negotiate every three years what makes sense to them Yep. At, with the school committee. The next one is review only. There are no recommended language changes from MASC or the attorney, and that is the curriculum adoption policy. On policy ID, the school day, the recommendation from MASC is to add um, guardians in addition to the word parents, so that to help ensure the safety of all children, parents to add slash guardians. Um, and also uh, to change, uh, the attorney said, rather than saying, um, students will not be admitted into the school building until the start of the official day unless bus schedules require earlier admittance. It is unless circumstances because it would not necessarily be limited to a bus schedule. There could be other circumstances that would warrant that. Any questions about that? Thoughts? Okay. All right. And then IGA, curriculum development. These are really minor language changes. You can see there was some semantic disagreement about it's the, and then at the end, they just took it out. Um, so, <laughs> so these are really, there's nothing, uh, no language really added, just as well as changed to and, and, and and taken out. Otherwise it remains the same. Um, policy IGB, this took me a minute. It took me a minute to understand paragraph two, which isn't even changing. So at the top, They've replaced district with Hadley Public School. 
um, schools, as we mentioned, and um, has the attorney has added um, the line that the student services staff will um, coordinate and supervise the implementation of curriculum, the instructional program, and support services to meet the needs of all students. So um, what they're doing um, with the administration and building staff in terms of curriculum implementation in the instructional program. That second paragraph, that director or final sentence, the director of student services shall be responsible for all students for students who are not eligible for special education assistance may sound uh, confusing to people. So it's referring to, to there are students who may not be eligible for special education uh, under IDEA, the law that governs special education, but they may still receive psychological services, speech services, um, and other services and the director of student services is responsible for coordinating and overseeing all related services, whether it's for a child with an individual ed plan or a student without. That person does all of that coordination of those services. Which does not include a 504, that's still the principal? It's, it, the coordination of those services still falls under, so in our case, Pam Haywood, the principal would chair the 504, but the coordination of the services, if that 504 team said, this student really could benefit from psychological services or speech services, the involvement would be just the coordination. She oversees all of their, she supervises those employees and oversees their schedules. Okay. And so she would coordinate those services. Um, under health education, uh, MASC has deleted what was previously their first line. Um, I, that's MASC's recommendation. Good health depends upon continuous lifelong attention to scientific advances and the acquisition of new knowledge. Um, so MASC has recommended removing that. And, um, and then there was a semantic suggestion from the attorney um, where they felt we had redundant language. So they just struck something that was mentioned twice in a sentence um, at the end of the health education. Under uh, file JB, equal educational opportunities, MASC has um, updated um, the uh, everything that's included in terms of being uh, sensitive to folks. So that this line, it will also offer careful consideration and sympathetic understanding of their personal feelings, particularly with reference to their race, creed. MASC has added color, sex. And then there's gender, gender identity, sexual orientation, religion, nationality, physical and intellectual differences, homeless status. Um, that was from the attorney to change it from homelessness to status. And pregnancy or pregnancy related condition was added, recommended by MASC and disability. MASC has recommended taking out, instead of just having district, putting your actual school district name. And the attorney has struck um, the part with the law, I think because it's redundant, it's listed above, um, and has replaced guidance with, uh, support services because it's more than just guidance counseling services. I also think that it, it, it uh, doesn't make sense to quote the law when the law could change and then make this obsolete rather quickly. True. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then file JEB is entrance age. This is review only. There's no reading on that. It's just, there were no recommendations from NASC or from the attorney. So if the school committee didn't have any recommendations, it would remain the same. School admissions in file JF, only the recommendation to uh, replace district with town. Town will be entitled, all children of school age who reside in the town will be entitled to attend the Hadley Public Schools. And um, just one addition of the word and um, at the bottom. Um, that was just uh, grammatical or semantic. File JHD exclusions and exemptions from school attendance. MASC has um, added language to the line the following are examples of grounds for denial or admission to school masc recommends adding or for diversion to an appropriate alternative program 
And the attorney has asked us to change uh, the line failure to meet the age requirements, add the word age, as fixed by the school committee, so to add as fixed by and consistent with the laws of the Commonwealth. Um, they have deleted the line having been expelled from the Hadley Public Schools or any other school district in the Commonwealth. They've deleted that as an example of a ground for denial of admission because that no longer, that used to be grounds for denial under 37H and a half. A student who had been expelled in the Commonwealth, any public school in the Commonwealth, no other public school in the Commonwealth had to admit that student and that changed with Mass General Laws Chapter 222. So that is no longer grounds for denying a student uh, admission into a public school district. A quick question, was that yeah. a recent change? No, do you recall when Donna was here as interim, I think you folks, uh, I remember actually, because after I was hired, I was at a school committee meeting when you all were talking about it. Chapter 222 often referred to as 37H and three quarters was it a big change in terms of um, expulsion and the continuation of academic services, even when a student was suspended. Yes. So there used to be three like drugs, guns, assaults on a faculty, done, goodbye, and you can't access education anywhere. And chapter 222 has changed that and it, it occurred when Donna was in Toronto. Got it, okay, thank you. Um, and let's see, alcohol, tobacco, and drug use prohibitions, uh, policy J-I-C-H. Um, so including uh, MASC suggested adding, but not limited to, and then gives example of all the prohibitions. The attorney has asked us to change school function to school sponsored event. Uh, MASC has suggested replacing alcoholic beverages with alcohol. Um, and the attorney has uh, suggested that we um, provide information and an explanation of verbal screening, which we refer to SBIRT, screening brief intervention and referral to treatment, which is something that happens at Hopkins Academy. It's done by nurses and our student support services staff, the guidance counselor, the other counselors. And the MASC also again recommends making sure every time we have parents, it says parent slash guardian, and to replace district with school system for this particular policy. Make sense? Good, okay. Uh, file JIH, so this whole section of J you can see has a lot to do with uh, discipline and um, lots to do with discipline. Uh, interrogations and searches, so MASC recommends adding the word safe uh, to the line, uh, Nevertheless, it is the duty of the school committee and school officials to maintain order and discipline in the schools, thereby ensuring a safe, MASC wants us to add that word, and then continue with positive educational environment. Um, and then what used to read locker searches, just now reads searches by staff, because it's not just a locker, um, that would be subject to these parameters. And, um, some grammatical, recommended grammatical changes, but no substantive changes on that page. On page two, um, so they've changed it from locker searches to uh, interviews uh, uh, and searches to just searches by staff. Next section, searches by police. The content of that section, they don't recommend any changes, but just searches by police. And then making interviews by police, an entirely new section. And you see this is MASC. We do have one typo, there's two commas there. We'll fix that in number one. Um, and these are MASC recommendations to change what was um, uh, previously to, uh, to more specificity um, about what students and families can expect if, um, there was a reason for um, if the police requested to interview a student. And file JII, student complaints and grievances, review only, um, and no recommended changes there. 
and uh, on JRA student records, MASC eliminated on or after June 2002. So the temporary record of each student enrolled on or after June 2002 and just got rid of that. The temporary record of each student enrolled will be destroyed no later than seven years after the student transfers. Um, so what is considered a permanent record will remain, which is essentially the transcript. Um, and uh, the temporary record when that gets uh, destroyed and how we let parents know or students know that that's going to happen. And the committee wishes to make clear that all individual student records of the school system are confidential. And then uh, the attorney um, has struck language um, about this extends to giving out individual addresses and telephone numbers. And I certainly wanna be clear, we don't go about giving out people's addresses and telephone numbers without their permission. Um, but the attorney, I believe, feels that there are circumstances in which um, with the permission of the party, aside from a memorandum of agreement that we might have with law enforcement or public health, um, the, uh, there may be circumstances that we would, know, we would ask a family, uh, you know what I can't think of right now, for example, at the elementary school, right? Uh, maybe something with sixth grade celebration or a yearbook or these kinds of things that we would ask permission, but um, I think the attorney felt that there were, there were a number of examples where parents might actually want this information shared for the greater good of something. And student photographs, JRD, just adding guardians after parents. Um, it's funny, these, these policies, even when uh, you all started putting this together before in 2012, and Donna was here and I arrived in 2014, and you were wrapping up that work then. And so I know that like all school committees and all school districts, it's interesting to me, you start with MASC's policies. So in some cases, MASC had parents or guardians, and in other policies, they only had parents. So that's, um, I don't know, people in the public are wondering why, why, why did they ever have this or why did some have this? The template is always the Mass Association of School Committee. No school committee wants to go off on its own and just start cooking things up on their own. So they, they use these policies because it's solid stuff and then MASC updates them and we... we well, and I was thinking to myself, I thought we had caught all occurrences of this, but th that makes sense. If MASC isn't recommending the change, we wouldn't necessarily address yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, we read it in our review, but it's a lot to read. And so you yeah. don't catch just like, I, I didn't catch the two commas until tonight. It's a lot to read. And uh, so you just don't, you don't see it. Do we have any concerns or additional changes we want to make aside from that 180 instead of the 185? Nope. This looks pretty straightforward to me. I, I don't see anything that's particularly contentious and it's all pretty consistent with the law. So I think um, I would feel comfortable with all of these changes except for the 180 days. Yeah, I agree. 185 days. Changing Perfect. it to 180. Okay, and so do we want a, um, and just before one of you does a motion to adjourn, um, I will also make sure, I know Tara, your, your work schedule, assuming there's gonna be a reorg tonight of um, the school committee. So if you're, if you're both on policy, we would have to look to do it at a different time. Um, and that's not a problem because if Tara's, uh, Tara's gonna have a different work schedule. So just so we know that, that we would just need to do it at a different time. Um, but I do kind of like how, I like doing a little bit every month. That mm -hmm. seems much more manageable, less likely for something to interfere and then we cancel, it's another quarter. So this feels a lot more doable to get through the book every year. I couldn't agree with you more. And I think the, um, the online format uh, and the timing, the timing is really, has worked well. Um, Tara, what, how does your work schedule change and what will work better for you? So I will be Mondays and Tuesdays working till 5.30. So I told Annie, I won't be able to get to a 5.30 school committee meeting. I can get there as quick as six. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, I am going to ask just so I, I am going to ask to stay on policy. I really like doing yeah. it. And it's something I've been able to kind of work out. Okay. Minus now the, the mm -hmm. 430 time. Yeah. Um, I like doing them virtually. I don't know if that's something that we can continue just for policy. Even no, so 
the problem with this, well, you, you folks have a different advocacy arm that please, please, please lean heavily on MASC to try to get this to continue. Mm -hmm. I think this online meeting is fantastic. If the public were to indicate to us that they somehow felt disenfranchised by this, then I would want to change it. But apparently folks feel that they're getting information by watching. Um, so, so legislatively, a quorum of a subcommittee can, like, you can't have anyone online until you have a physical quorum. Outside of this emergency law, that's the right. only time it can work. So even at school committee, three of you have to be present before anybody can tune in virtually. And for a subcommittee, because we're so small, like we have to be there Everybody. under under the old laws or the non-emergency legislation. But my gosh, I mean, I know MASS similarly will probably try to get the legislature to consider the viability of subcommittee work done yeah. in this format. So anything yeah. you can do to encourage MASC to push well, and, you know, Everything in our society has changed. People are far yeah. more used to going online, having meetings, attending town committees, yeah. uh, volunteer efforts. Um, I, I would imagine that uh, there, there would be a lot of support for something like this. And I'm happy, Tara, to work with you to potentially send MASC and anyone else a letter that describes just how much easier and also accessible this format has been. Uh, I want to also uh, mention that I've, I think I too will offer to continue to stay on the policy committee. Um, I've found this um, section by section workload to be very manageable. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like I'm just now hitting my stride in really understanding the relevance of these policies. Yeah. It takes a while to get to that point. So I feel like it do some good. Um, so. Fantastic. So we can, yeah, I mean, so we can sort out any, I mean, God willing, I think we'll, I, the, the emergency legislation regarding virtual interaction is absolutely going to continue for the foreseeable future. We don't even, if everything goes perfectly, right. Massachusetts doesn't hit phase three until the, the, the fall. And so I, this is, this will in this format for quite a while, but even when uh, a vaccine is developed and better therapies are available and this situation changes, I hope this doesn't have to change. <laughs> so I'm hoping more. And there's time to do some serious advocacy around Agreed. making in many yeah. cases it easier for people to log on and participate rather than yep. physically be there. I, not, and, and therefore, better for the schools because decisions can be made in a more timely fashion without yeah. having the bottleneck of people meeting physically uh, despite their busy lives. Right. No, mm -hmm. agree. Agree. All right. Perfect. Well, would somebody like to adjourn? A motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Okay. Seconded. That's easy. <laughs> I assume since you're the motion in the second that everyone's in favor. All right. Thanks so much folks. And we'll log on to a different link at 530.